you know, yeah. a porch often has a area that is very bright. You're going to see the sky. You're going to see potentially even the sun. Um, and then a place where it's going to be more shadowy because the overhang from the roof, you know, is, is casting a shadow on the face of the person that's there. And it's yeah. in fact that area that you want to secure the most. And that does Everyone, welcome to another episode of In the Trenches Roundtable series. Today, we're doing a feature-focused episode, and we're going to be focusing on the feature that is WDR. So we've got our awesome panel of experts here again with us today. Howdy. Howdy. Great. And we're just going to go ahead and get right started. So what is WDR? This is for anybody to answer. We should probably start by talking... WDR, what does it even stand for? Um, so it stands for, range. yeah, why dynamic Sorry. range? <laughs> You're fine. Um, we're all excited about what WDR here. Um, so you got why dynamic range um, and what actually is it? So why dynamic range is a feature. We'll talk about the differences in the different sites, but essentially it's a deal with the fact that we live in a world that has shadows and shadows and security don't always play good together. You know, you don't want to get somebody's face and have it be all shadowy and dark, not be able to see who it is. Um, so WDR works to counter the bright areas and the dark areas so that you can see people more clearly as they're on cameras or anything that's clearly on, more on cameras. So you're not shadowy, essentially. Yeah, so like, I mean, shadows are even difficult in regular photography. You know, yeah. you, you wanna take, if you're taking a photo of a well-lit space, you wanna have the shutter and that's the the thing that, mechanically open so that the lens lets light in it. You want that open longer, or you want that open shorter so it doesn't absorb and over brighten the image. So what WDDAR does is it literally takes two photos and then it stitches them together. It makes the, the areas that are dark uh, taken with a longer shutter speed to let more light in. And then that sort of overlays that image on top of the areas that it took with a shorter shutter speed um, so that uh, the you know the what's behind the subject, so the person in front of the window isn't all dark, and the window isn't so bright that it is overwhelming towards the, the subject. And, what the and it does an amazing job at it too. Uh, like uh, I was impressed the first time I ever saw it, and then I wound up using it on my own home system. It, it does a great job at it. Gotcha. Because that was kind of going to be my next question was, so it sounds like not only, you know, there's so many factors you've got to kind of consider when you're looking at surveillance cameras, where to place them. And it sounds like lighting is one of those things that you should be considering. Definitely do it a degree. Um, lighting is one of the most important things. So if you're an inside, you're inside and you have these nice big windows and everything like that. And inside you're sort of, you're lighting up the area with that natural light. And it looks good for us. And, you know, it's, it's like nice level of light. But for the camera, it's seeing kind of, you're trying to see what's going on inside that building, right? Um, and you, you know, it's seeing that big bright light over there and that's just too much too much of a difference in lighting for the camera to do well in. That's where like having that WDR function is so important and picking a camera that does the true WDR, which we'll talk about versus the digital WDR is even more important, so. Another really good example and one that I know for sure that we have a, a version of is, is a porch. You know, yeah. a porch often has a area that is very bright. You're going to see the sky. You're going to see potentially even the sun. Um, and then a place where it's going to be more shadowy because the overhang from the roof, you know, is, is casting a shadow on the face of the person that's there. And it's yeah. in fact that area that you want to secure the most. And that does mean that it's there's usually a difficult uh, job to uh, for a camera to get a photo of somebody that's uh, inside the shadow that's being created from the overhang from the roof. But yeah. the, the, that's where your security threat is. You don't really care about the guy walking around, you know, on, you know, uh, the street or the guy that's walking, you know, on the sidewalk. You care when they come onto your porch. Um, and so same idea for, you know, a lot of spaces, uh, you know, when you're dealing with surveillance. The places where you want to have a photo is typically where the inside meets the outside you want to protect from intrusion and that usually means bright and dark contrast at the same time in the same image uh yep. wdr is a really important feature to have i should um i guess um in terms of one thing that we should make clear too is that wdr is actually not on by default you do have to actually enable it um so if you pull out your cameras and you're seeing kind of this you go wait a minute i thought i got this wdr you actually do have to enable it 
um, within the camera before it actually works. So um, and that's in the image settings and um, under, you know, under that setting, so. Yeah, image and I believe it's exposure. Yeah. So how do I know if my camera has WDR, has this feature? Uh, all of our cameras have WDR. Most of them have the true double WDR, but you know, all, every every single camera that SCW currently carries has WDR on it. Gotcha. Gotcha. And we've been talking a little bit about like I've heard. I think Matt, Michael, and even James. I think you've all mentioned it at some point. Like this notion of true this is, I guess, not true. Or can you guys help me understand that a little bit more? Yeah. The the contrast there is between true and digital. Um, mm -hmm. True is a hardware chip that's taking two photos. Uh, mm. Digital is sort of After Effects type software that's trying to do the image. So yeah, basically, you know, it comes to digital WDR. You, this is not a feature you want to rely on to get good shadow and bright, comp, you know, balance there. It's not going to do what you need it to do. Um, you want a camera with a true WDR because um, it does, you know, the two images at the same time, everything like that, and the effect of it is much, much greater. Um, I do think it's important to notice too about WDR though, that it is something that um, adjusts as the day goes on. Um, so it's like some people, you only have a shadow for two or three hours during the course of a day, right? Um, you might be worried that if you turn WDR on, it's gonna be you know, too bright or something like that, but it'll actually compensate itself with like the decibel, there's a DB rating on them um, that tells you like what the range is. Most of our cameras are 120 DB um that allows you to kind of it will adjust between that shadow level so instead of taking two one really bright one really dark it will kind of um you know make it the effect a little bit less um i, I don't know if parents are right word but a little less um large and you know you can have you have a you have a slider basically uh from level i think it's one to ten or something like somewhere around there where you can make that adjustment and um, so you can make it to where it's more aggressive or less aggressive, essentially. What happens at nighttime? It's a good question. I mean, even in, in, in nighttime image, WDR can be helpful in some situations now because, and you're going to be dealing, there's less shadows there at night, of course, um, mm -hmm. because you don't have the sun, um, but you can still have some shadows from different lighting sources in there. It depends on if your camera is going into night mode or if it's staying in day mode because you have enough mm. ambient lighting around. Um, so there's lots of different factors there, but that's a good question. Um, you know, even with IR mode, you can potentially be dealing with shadows where it helps to to compensate from a darker area and a brighter area, depending on your ambient lighting. Right. I'm curious to uh, like if I'm understanding this correctly, WDR kind of helps eliminate some of the shadowness that can happen when looking at the camera screen. And I know sometimes like motion detection recording is based off pixel change. Does WDR or true WDR help like eliminate the false positives of motion detection? Not so much. Something yeah. like motion, not really, because it is based off of a pixel change. So any change in the pixels can set off something like motion. Now it might help with something more like intrusion detection or line crossing. You know, just yeah. because you're brightening up that area that might be super dark. So you're your person and the area aren't so much of the same color that you're not seeing that. So yeah, I can I can definitely see it making a a big difference there actually. Yeah, for analytic for any of those VCA functions that mm -hmm. definitely. Where would you rank WDR in terms of like a feature set a camera should have? Like, is this something that if I'm it's just, shopping for cameras, I should definitely look for cameras that have this or? Absolutely, because you never yeah. know what the lighting is going to look like throughout the day. It's going to change. You know, you can go outside right now and it's an overcast day for us. You might even hear the thunder. But um, <laughs> it's, you know, an overcast day and the shadows are not too bad for me today. But, you know, so if I'm sitting there and I'm evaluating my video and I say, hey, I don't really have too many shadows. Maybe I don't have to, to spring for it. Um, with us, almost all of our cameras have the true WDR as well. So it's like not like you have to pay additional in order to get it. So mm -hmm. as you're looking, if, if you're comparing us to somebody else, make sure they do have the true WDR, not the, the digital WDR, because you're really comparing apples to a rotten apple, really, <laughs> I guess. Like. Yeah, I, I think digital wide dynamic range uh, is one of those industry terms that should that really should have died a long time ago. Yeah, uh, it really. It does do something, but it's not a lot, no. um, you know, and it, it's so confusing and so close to true wide dynamic range, which does something that is a lot. Um, and, right. and the words are so close together. 
Um, and often there's so many things that like, um, when you put digital in front of them, it doesn't mean it's bad. Like a digital video recorder was an improvement upon, you know, a VCR. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, uh, there's so many things where if, when you put digital in front of it, you're talking about improvement. This is not one of those things. This nope. is a drastic reduction in quality. Uh, if you're comparing something with true wide dynamic range versus something with digital wide dynamic range. It's and very similar to the way that we talk about Zoom, you know, uh, where, uh, you know, a verifocal optical zoom camera is a thousand times better than digital zoom uh, and it, it ends up creating all this market confusion because somebody goes they both have zoom same thing is happening here a lot of people say they both have wide dynamic range and this one's a little cheaper they are not in any way the same and Do not to be negative doing. but that is exactly the intention of w digital wdr some manufacturers probably wanted to say this camera has wdr look at it and you know, and even though it didn't really have the true WDR function, I, I'm thinking I'm not 100% sure on this, but I'd imagine true WDR came first. And then in order to make, you know, lower cost things seem better, they said, let's do this contrast and, yep. and brightness adjustment thing on it. And then look, we have WDR now too. And of course, it's not a comparable function whatsoever. So, I mean, that's unfortunately probably where it came from. It, it sounds confusing and it sounds deceptive probably because it was so yes i completely agree with that yep. it, it's definitely a deceptive term um absolutely uh, don't they call it hdr nowadays too like high dynamic like range. Range. Uh, yeah high Bones. dynamic range yeah instead of wide dynamic range yeah um, in, the, in the security camera world it's it's that um unlike if you go and you uh, i grab and i take three pictures and i combine them together and you know for photography it is called hdr so yeah your phone will also call it HDR if you're in like HDR mode. So that's a good analogy, actually. If you're, if you, a lot of you TVs have, have HDR mode now. Yeah. Yep. If you have a smartphone and you're taking pictures and it's a nice little, you might have had two situations. You're at like a beautiful sunset. You're trying to take pictures of somebody there. And you bring up your phone and the sun's all nice and bright. And then the face is completely shadow. Now, if you get like yep. a newer phone, phones are a lot more smart about doing, you know, doing something like WDR where it actually will take two pictures basically and combine them into one. And so that technology and that idea behind that is spread across multiple industries and everything like that. So if you've experienced that on your newer phone, you go, wow, that's so impressive. I can see the sunset and my face. That's a similar effect to what you're going to get with true WDR on a camera. So. Yeah. And just to be clear, there is a company out there that says they have true high dynamic range. And this is not a thing. This is not a real thing. Like high dynamic range is a synonym for uh, digital wide dynamic range. Wide dynamic range is physical hardware in a camera. So mm -hmm. putting the word true on, on high dynamic range is, is exactly what James was saying earlier. It's just intentionally designed to be misleading. Yep. Uh, you know, Because true wide dynamic range means a physical piece of hardware that's taking two different photos. And high dynamic range just is a synonym for digital wide dynamic range. Mm. Putting true in front of it is just trying to hide what you, you're made. Awesome. marketing and yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah no kidding uh sorry one more question about products and just how th this all works so you mentioned that almost all i believe all of our cameras have wdr and it works on ptz's the same it does on fixed lens right ptz's might move around so their shadows yep. would be affected a little bit more but it changes on the fly yep absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. our ptz's have true wdr as well awesome. yeah well that's it that's wdr in a nutshell Make sure to check out a lot of the links to some of the resources we'll have in the description above or below. And if you have any comments or feedback, drop them in the comments. We really appreciate you stopping by and checking out this In the Trenches Roundtable, this feature focus on WDR. If you have any questions, feel free to call our support team, our sales team. We'll be happy to walk you through um, anything regarding WDR or any of the other topics that we've discussed in these roundtables. So until next time, Thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Bye-bye for now. See ya. Bye.